all right all right what's up everybody welcome back to structure free chicka chicka learning and in this video we're gonna go back to engineering dynamics and explain normal and tangential coordinates used to describe curvilinear motion and hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a sense of where normal and tangential components come from how to define them on the particle and then maybe even use them or at least have a sense of how to use them to solve problems. So let's start with a particle moving on a curved path. So this particle is this black dot is moving on this path here. And we'll say that the it started from here along the, the position along the path here is S. You know, whenever we deal with any sort of coordinate system, we want to think about where's the origin. Well, kind of a special thing about the normal and tangential components is that the origin is actually on the particle itself and it's moving with the particle. And so there is no fixed reference, if you will, like we have for, for like an XYZ coordinate system or a polar coordinate system. All right, so the origin is on the particle itself. The next thing we want to do is define the positive sense of each of the components. So first is the tangential component. And just like the word itself, the tangential component is always tangent to the path and it's positive in the direction of increasing position or in the direction that it's moving. So in this drawing here, the positive t direction would be tangent to the path. And since the particle is generally moving up this curved path, it would be pointing in the upwards direction like this, the positive tangential coordinate. And then we could draw a unit vector to describe this direction as here, call this a unit vector ut hat like that. And then the positive normal direction is always pointing towards the center of curvature and it's perpendicular to the tangential component. And it would look like this. So 90 degrees towards the center of curvature. Here, the center of curvature is pointing generally to the left in this case, based on the path. And this direction would be the positive n direction and the unit vector. Hey, and so that's really half the battle is identifying what the positive tangential and normal components are. One question that might come up is where is the center of curvature? All right. So in order to do that here, let's just draw another curved path here. And, and let's say my particle is here and this this particle is on a segment of the curve and where this curve, this portion of the curve, I'll put it in, in uh, light green here, this portion or segment of the curve could be described as part of a circle that looks like this. Yeah, hey, and so look, this segment of the curved path is part of this big green dotted circle and the center of that circle is here and that would be the center of curvature. And so if I'm looking at the particle here, my positive tangential direction, let's say my particle is moving to the right here, generally to the right, then my positive tangential direction would be this way. This would be my plus T orientation. And my positive normal co co coordinate would to be towards the center of curvature. And this would be plus N. There's even a, another interesting dimension here. The, there's a radius associated with the circle you know, that starts from here to the particle, we'll say right here, there's a radius of the circle and we call that rho the radius of curvature. And so if my particle were, let's say on, on this portion of the curve here, well, shoot, at that point, the path, this segment of the path that the particle is on might be described by this circle. <laughs> hey, hey, that's a circle. That looks circular. What's up? All right. You and I know that, hey, this, this segment right here, this little curved segment of the path could only be described by a circle that's above the path, if you will. And the center of that circle would be right here. Uh, this circle would have a radius boom right here. I'll call that rho for the radius of curvature to that point right there. There would be a tangent line to that point on the path, which would give my positive tangential component, which would be here. 
like this. This would be my plus T direction, and my plus N direction would point towards the center of curvature. Boom, like this, and this would be my plus N. And that's how I would define my normal and tangential components as I move along the path. And again, this particle is moving like this in this direction right here. That is the direction of increasing position. All right, so that's how we define the center of curvature. And just to put a little note, so now we have a sense of how to define the positive normal tangential directions wherever we are on a curved path. Let's go ahead next and define the velocity and acceleration vectors. I'll give you an overview before any sort of derivation here. So let me get my previous drawing back down here. Boom. There we go. Yes. All right, so now I want to talk about the velocity vector in normal tangential components. I've got here the particle moving on a curved path. Before I even define a coordinate system, I know that my velocity vector is always tangent to the path. If the particle is moving up, you know, my velocity vector is going to be pointing like this. And I have yet to define any coordinate system. And if I define a coordinate system based on this velocity vector, then I can break it, you know, then I can break up this velocity vector into its components. The tangential component is tangent to the path. Let's say it started here and it moved up like this. It's moving up this path here. So my positive tangential direction is in the same line as the velocity vector like this right here. Boom. So this is my plus T direction. My normal direction is towards the center of curvature, 90 degrees to that. So there is my normal component plus N. And what I noticed from this drawing is that my velocity vector has only one component. And that component is the tangential component. So this we would describe as V U T hat right here, indicating that is it is in the tangential direction. This V right here, this right here would represent the speed or magnitude of velocity, and it varies with time. One thing you'll know is that if you know the direction of the tangent or the slope of the path, then you have the direction of the velocity vector and vice versa. All right, so now let's look at acceleration. Let's look at the acceleration vector in NT components. And again, let's look at the same drawing. The acceleration vector can be pointing in any direction here. For Just for the sake of an example, I'm going to have this thing point this way. So here's my acceleration vector before I even choose a coordinate system in which to define it in. If I choose normal and tangential components, I want to define my positive tangential and positive normal components. Boom. Those are my positive, normal, and tangential components. And then, you know, I can take this, I look at it already, and I can see that this acceleration vector has two components. And by vector algebra, I can break this up into its tangential. So the, the part that's in its tangential direction, which would be here, AT, and the normal component, AN, like this. And the way that I would describe this would be that the acceleration vector is the sum of the tangential plus the normal component. If I break this up a little bit more, like the magnitude of the tangential direction in the tangential component or the, the tangential unit vector plus the magnitude of the normal UN hat. And for our definitions, the tangential component is defined as Without derivation, this is just being given to you. AT is dv dt, and the normal component, v squared over rho. Yes, and and here, hopefully, some of this all looks, it's starting to look a little familiar. If I wanted the magnitude of the acceleration, it's just a square root of some squares. Yes, some basic standard definitions. But something maybe you'll notice is if we look at the acceleration in the tangential direction, hopefully this right here looks somewhat familiar to you. It is just AT equals DV DT. And really, it's a time derivative of the speed. And what, what it says or what it indicates is that if we look in the tangential direction only, then it's as if as if we have 1D motion along the path, and that is an important observation. So our analysis in the tangential direction looks like 1D motion along the path. And that's an important observation and something that you want to be aware of because that means, hey, guess what? We get to use 
all these relationships, we can say that tangential component of acceleration is dV dt. The speed is the time rate of change of the position along the path, ds dt. And if I combine the two relationships together, then I would get this at ds is v dv. And you can imagine all kinds of problems that we did went back with 1D motion that we can apply here. And that's the beauty of, of this normal tangential components is that when we're looking, you know, when we use this NT component system, whenever we're looking just in the tangential direction, it's like 1D motion, man. And the normal component of acceleration, sometimes even called the centripetal acceleration, maybe you've heard that before, but this normal component of acceleration, AN, V squared over rho, this is relatively easy to calculate if you know the speed and the radius of curvature at some time t, or as a function of time. All right, all right. So when I think about normal tangential components, I really think about the power associated with this idea here, that looking in the tangential direction is like looking at 1D motion here. All right, another thing that you, well, you'll encounter as you solve problems with this is from calculus, the radius of curvature formula. And the radius radius of curvature at a point on a function or curve is, is really just this equation here, this rho, this radius of curvature is all right, and you can look that up. You just Google radius of curvature formula and, and you'll see this equation all over the place. And it's probably on the inside cover of your textbook, but that's all of normal and tangential components in a nutshell. This is about, this is pretty much everything you would want to know when it comes to normal and tangential components. But maybe some of you are wondering, shoot, this question might be in your head. How do we go? from this velocity equation, V U T hat, to this acceleration equation. Like, how did this happen? So if you're interested in the answer to that question, that means you're interested in the derivation, and that's coming up next.